Thousands of women filled the streets of Cairo late Tuesday to condemn the military's attacks on unarmed protesters in one of the largest displays of women-driven protests in the country's history. In Tahrir Square, police and soldiers fired guns and tear gas to try to disperse them, according to the Christian Science Monitor. A graphic video made public over the weekend showed soldiers brutally stomping on a woman and stripping off her clothes. Other attacks on women have sparked outrage in the country, where some nine 900 people have been injured and 14 killed during the past five days alone. For more, we're joined by Gada Hashem Talhami. She's the author of the book, The Mobilization of Muslim Women in Egypt. Welcome to FSRN. Thank you. In your book, Professor, you trace the development of women-driven movements in Egypt, including the mobilizations in 1919 in the last century. How do you view the events of the past few days in Cairo? I think uh, the women have been a forgotten sector in Egyptian politics, and now they are really taking control of the main meaning of what they call the January 25 revolution. They don't call it the Arab Spring, by the way. The January 25 revolution began by women like Asma Mahfouz, who was involved in the April 6 pro-labor movement, and other secular activists. It began really as a, an important uh, idea, which is to redefine what is citizenship in Egyptian politics, that is, citizenship should extend to women and to minorities. And then the more organized groups, like the Muslim Brotherhood and the Salafis, in a sense have hijacked that revolution, I might, I might as well use this term, by making the whole contest between them and between the old regime as a contest over the question of the national identity, that is making it an Islamic identity. This is not what all Egyptian sectors really believe in. They believe there are other issues in the revolution. And we have now seen veiled women, indeed the woman who was dragged in the square in a semi-nude state, uh, she's veiled, so she's wearing a veil, so she's, we assume, an Islamic woman, she's not secular. And so she's in the square, in the public square, demanding to play a role like any other Egyptian citizen. I think for people who know the history of the feminist movement in Egypt, this is not surprising at all. What is surprising is that the military institution should be so insensitive as to overlook the history of female participation in Egyptian politics in this manner. Well, you make the important point that uh, women have been involved in this movement since the very beginning. And you also write about in your book at how at different periods and different points in time in Egypt, the wider society or the different segments of society have responded differently to a push for more political freedom or, or greater roles for women. In this transitional period now, with Mubarak removed from power and the military council ruling, how do you see that response, the response to women going into the streets and demanding rights? I think it's putting the conservative elements in society on notice that the real issue here is really not only political justice, but also social justice. I think the participation of women, mothers, wives, daughters, is about the impoverished family. The impoverished families in Egypt, who of course where the men are victims as much as the women, means that everybody is going to be demanding a new kind of arrangement, a new kind of distribution of social justice in that country. The new thing element here, which I think, again, is very surprising, is the military's interest in resorting to sexual violence in order to frighten their male relatives and in order to intimidate them against any kind of participation. And the result has always been the opposite. It has always strengthened the resolve of men and women to resist and to put up a a greater resistance than what the military authorities actually expect. And moving ahead from this, this protest on Tuesday has been called one of the largest in decades where women are at the forefront. How do you see that influencing the next steps in this uh, period for Egypt and for the society there? Well, it's creating greater pressure against the military establishment. Uh, the attack on women in the Tahrir Square, particularly on Rada Kamal, has started because there were people who were demonstrating and staging sit-ins in front of the parliament building and the cabinet building. So the military institution has lost patience and acted in the same old way 
of attacking demonstrators with maximum violence, now of course adding the issue of the use of sexual violence against women. A lot of people have been complaining about the military institution, and the military institution will have to be seriously, seriously considering its tactics in the next few months before finally ceding all power to more civilian elements. Now, that doesn't end the main issues for women because the women will still have to fight their way through all this blockade created by the traditional patriarchal elements in society. Gada Hashem Talhami is the author of The Mobilization of Muslim Women in Egypt and a professor in the Department of Politics at Lake Forest College. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye.